In the previous video showed designing a financial system fairly rapidly. This is looking at a more complicated version where I'm actually doing some simulation as well. And I'm just starting so you can see the entire thing. I've scrolled down by using the minus uh, key over here to make it smaller. You can also use the plus to get larger. And if your mouse has a scroll bar, then pressing the scroll up and scroll down will change the view. If you want to shift things around, hold the shift key. Notice the change of the shape of the icon. You can then drag the whole thing around <laughs> with a bit of unreliability. Let's try that again. Okay, this is where we need more time to improve the program with a bit more development. Uh, clicking the zero key goes back to full scale and centers the thing so you get the, as best we do at the moment, you get everything lined up so that the leftmost hits the left hand of the screen, the topmost topmost point of the screen. Notice this is a group down here, Jupyter Definitions. One thing we've done which is different to the other programs, we zoom in to show these things rather than opening a separate window. I think we'll add a separate window as well at a later stage. We haven't got there yet. Zoom the display and there are some of the definitions. Notice the colons there, that's to indicate that we're inside a subgroup. Again, we'll, we'll fine tune that over time. So notice here I'm defining interest, interest fees, repayments, etc. Uh, loan interest payments, for example, are the rate of interest on loans multiplied by the outstanding level of loans, and so on for all the other terms there. Let's go back to the zero scale. How did I define those? Well, one trick we have in the program, uh, which we're going to improve over time, is, is if I right-click on one of those icons, I can copy a variable, but that's the flow, and I come down here, right-click and copy. That's the stock and I can now do whatever operations I want to do by combining the two and I'll do a nonsense one here uh, just to show what's going on but I can use exactly the same uh, design techniques to design an equation together in the program and I'll just uh, give this a suitable label well, that's what's involved in making your definition so right click to choose an object. If you right click inside, you get to open the godly table, but if you right click on a particular uh, flow, then you can bring that out and take a look at that as well. Now I'll just run a rubber band around these lot, group them, and then delete the group. Uh, let's just simulate this particular model. and I can change the values of variables as the program is running and see what happens and so on, which is again one of the little features that we think makes it uh, rather more usable than say a program like Vensim where you can't do this sort of stuff on the fly. Okay, that's all I'll do. I hope that gives you some idea of what Minsky can do. I'll just What else can I talk about here before I stop chatting? These buttons here were when we, did, we didn't have mode-based clicking. So in the past you had to click on move before you could move, click on wire before you could draw a wire, click on lasso before you grabbed it, that'll disappear at some stage. <coughs> we have a comment window now, not a particularly sophisticated one, but you can make a note in. Uh, and that note can be multi-line as well, I haven't shown that there, but let's just go through and edit that. Obviously not sensibly documenting this model, but you can document the model as you go on with the notepad, with the, uh, notepad there. Um, in terms of variables and things like that, one little trick which we've used is we want to make it possible to build a simple model first of all and make it more sophisticated over time. And that means we've made it possible to change from one uh, type to another. So if I have type var here, then I can start off with being defined as a flow when I type it on the, on, the, on the canvas, but I can make that a constant, for example. If I do make it a constant, as you'll see in a moment, its value becomes, its name becomes what its value is. But I can go inside there and now say let's make it a parameter and call it Fred and leave the value with 100. It's now called Fred. The value should be shown as 100 there because it is 100. 
but it means I can modify that over time. Equally, I can make Fred into a, into a, uh, a flow variable, so it can be defined by other elements in the system. And finally, I can make it into an integral block, so Fred is now the result of a, a dy dynamic uh, model. Uh, so you can build a model which, for example, has a constant population where pop your variable for population could be a, um, a parameter, and then you can change it into making it a, a variable which is called, uh, changed by the low rate, rate of population growth. So start with a simple model, make it more sophisticated, you don't have to start redefining right from scratch.